Welcome to worship. Please know how much we miss you, but we are continuing to find ways to connect with you. One of the ways is we've assembled a new newsletter, which you should be receiving in your home within just a couple days. And in the newsletter, you'll find information about ways that we can um, stay connected. Our ministry and program staff phone numbers are listed in there now. So if you have any questions or concerns about something specifically, please contact uh, one of us and we're happy to get back to you. As a way to continue to keep people safe and healthy, we will no longer be having regularly staffed office hours. So uh, if you need something, again, please call one of us directly. During this time, please know that we will have somebody uh, come and check the snail mail and the messages on the answering machine and any emails. So we will get back to you as soon as we can. But again, we'll have to find other ways to connect outside of the Trinity building. Thank you so much to everybody who's been able to continue to give your tithes and your offering. Some people have wondered about how they could do this. Well, you can snail mail it. Otherwise, go to our website where you can find some online giving resources. Again, any questions, give us a call. Please know that we continue to keep you in our prayers at this time. And we invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? O oh Lord, hear our prayers, those spoken and those in the depths of our heart known only to you. In these days and in every day, there are things that we do not know, but there are things that we do know. We know what the next hours will bring, your healing presence to each and every one of us. Remind us that we find our rest, our strength, our peace, and our hope in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
reading from Psalm 102, verses 12 through 17. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold its stones dear, and I have pity on its dust. The nations will fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion, he will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Here ends that reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 13 verses 1 through 8 and 24 through 37. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another, and all will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginnings of the birth pangs. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the summer when the for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Good morning, everybody. It is so great to be with you today in worship. It has been um, wonderful to hear all the stories of how you guys are creatively, creatively loving your neighbors um, after last week's children's sermon. And I hope you guys keep it up because you are just awesome at being God's hands and feet and sharing God's love. So um, I'm so proud of you. This week, we're going to talk about something just a little bit different. Um, and so our story today comes from the Spark Story Bible. If you have one at home, it is on page 346, and it is called Be Ready. So here we go. Jesus was walking into Jerusalem with his disciples when one of them pointed at a tower of heavy stones being used to build a temple. Look, the disciple said, what huge stones, what large buildings. Jesus stopped and said, You see these big towers of stone? Someday all these stones will fall down. Not one of them will remain standing. 
Peter and the other disciples were confused. The temple wasn't even finished yet. What would make it fall down? They began to worry. When will this happen? Peter asked Jesus. Jesus paused and smiled kindly at his friends. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Watch and wait. Be ready. Even when scary things happen, God is working for good. Jesus told them this to comfort them. Jesus knew that trouble was coming. Soon, Jesus would die on the cross. So here we are, Jesus hanging out with his crew of disciples that traveled around with Jesus, and they came across a temple being built. Now, do you guys know what a temple is? A temple was a really important building in the towns um, back then, and they still are temples today, but the temples were their place of worship their church. And um, they believed that God was there and it was really special. So when the disciples went and they saw these huge stones being built and Jesus said, hey, you know that, that that's not going to be here and the temple's going to fall. The disciples were like, wait, what? Are you kidding? And they kind of, they started to get afraid because they could not imagine why that would happen or what would cause that to happen. But Jesus told them something really, really important. He said, don't be afraid. Now, do you guys worry? I want you to take a minute and I want you to turn to the people next to you right now that you're sitting in worship with. And if you're by yourself, that's okay. I just want you to um, think about it. But why don't you take a minute and say something that you are worried about or that you worry about in general. Share with your family um, or take a moment to think about that. And you can pause if you need more time. But yeah, as people, we worry sometimes, right? I know I worry about different things. And right now we're in a time where it looks kind of different, right? There are different things to worry about. We want people to be safe. Maybe you're worried about doing school different on Monday. Um, maybe you're worried about your family or worried that you're going to get along with your family in your house. Who knows? <laughs> but there are lots of things sometimes that we worry about. And you know what? That's okay. It is okay to feel the feelings that you have and to um, be honest about the things you worry about. But here's the really, really important thing, you guys, that I want you to remember. Is that Jesus said, here's the line, ready? When scary things happen, God is working for good. I'm going to say it one more time. When scary things happen... God is working for good. Now I want you guys to think about that. God working for good. Do you guys think of, can you think of ways that God is working for good? Like right now, maybe we could say this is a scary time. It's kind of different, right? We're not um, used to not going to school and um, being at home more often. And things are looking a little different. And maybe that causes us to worry. And um, But in this time... There are lots of things and ways that God is working for good. Can you guys think of what some of those ways might be that God is working for good? Can you guys share if your family has any brainstorm? Some of the ways I see God working for good right now in this time is like at school. Your teachers love you guys so much and they are working so hard to make school happen for you on Monday. And while it might look different... God is working with those teachers to give you guys the best um, school experience you can, even if you're learning somewhere different. Or I see God working for good through all the people working at the hospitals, using the things that they're really good at, their gifts of helping people and trying to make them feel better. Those doctors and nurses and staff, God is working for good. How many of you guys have put hearts in your windows? That has been really cool to watch. Everybody spreading love all over the world. That even if we can't um, talk to each other and see each other, we can um, remind people that they are loved by putting hearts in our windows as they walk by, that we bring them joy. That is God working for good. Um, there are people that are shopping for one another that can't go out of their houses right now. There are people that are checking on 
their loved ones to see how they are doing and not to mention all the ways that you guys did that last week when we talked about what are ways that you can love your neighbor. And so God is working for good and God is working for good through you and spreading his love and reminding people that they are not alone in maybe this scary time, that good things are still happening. And God is always with us in that. So here's um, something I want you to remember that when you might be afraid or you're worried, like the disciples were, they wanted to know the answers and they we're nervous, and that's okay to feel that way. But here are two things I want you guys to do when you feel that way. When you feel worried or afraid, number one is I want you to tell somebody who loves you. Tell them what you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. And it's okay, they, nobody might have the answers, but it's better to tell somebody that you love how you're feeling. Number two is... Um, I want you to look for those good things around you. When you feel worried and nervous, try to find God in the good things because God's love is all around you and there are ways to find joy and happiness even when we're scared and worried. So number one is to tell somebody you love how you're feeling and number two is to still look for all the ways that God is at work. Um, for good in the world around us, even in these times, that God is with all the helpers. And you know what? God is with all of us, even when we are scared and we're worried, when we're happy, when we're sad, and everything in between, God is always, always with you, and you are never alone. And so the other, you can talk to God about how you feel anytime, and God will listen and know that you are never alone, my friends, and that God is always, always with you. Will you guys please pray with me? We will do, um, I'll say a line, and then you guys can repeat it back. Let's pray. Dear God, be with us in the times we worry. Help us to remember we are never alone. Help us to always look for the ways that you are working for good in the world. We thank you for always being with us. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And now we always end our time with a blessing, so please repeat after me. God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be on my left. And God be on my right. Have a wonderful week, you guys, and I will be praying for you as you start your school week on Monday. Blessings, my friends. Grace to and peace from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey, friends. How you doing? So this morning, our gospel text is from Mark chapter 13, and the title is The End of the Age. For reals, this is the assigned text for a narrative lectionary for Sunday, March 29th. Now, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or that's just a little ironic. Right now, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so I suppose it's as good a time as any to talk about end stuff, right? Here we go. People have named that they've never experienced anything like this, like the fact that we're living through these things right now. And I know that when we experience new things, it can leave us pretty unsettled. Even for the pace setters, the change agents, they're saying that this is leaving them a little concerned, a little uncomfortable as they raise an eyebrow looking to the future. However, as God's people, we know that his word, his holy scripture helps to give us comfort and reassures us that God is in the midst of all good things. To me, this text is like one of those big body size pillows. It's just allowing us to snuggle in and rest our weary and anxious souls. So here's what's going on in the text. Jesus and his disciples are coming out of the temple. And one of the disciples says, look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. The disciple is overcome with the bigness, the vastness, the awesomeness of this temple. And Jesus says, yeah, you see how great these buildings are? Guess what? Not one stone will be left on top of the other. 
Okay, so the disciples kind of leave that for a while because they know that the temple is so important to everything they do in their lives. They recognize that God dwells in the temple and that God's teaching is contained there. Um, the laws, the prophets, the hope, all that they have is centralized in that temple. So for Jesus to say it's going to be destroyed, it kind of sets them on edge. So they let it go for a while until they're alone with Jesus. And then one of the disciples says, hey, you know, you mentioned that that temple is going to be destroyed. So when and how will that be? What will the sign be? The disciples want to know when and how because it's human nature. It's like every single one of us. We want to know what's coming so that we can be prepared for it. Even if it's awful, even if it's bad news, we seem to think that if we know it's coming, we're going to be ready for it. However, here we are living in the midst of a pandemic and we're realizing we can't fully be prepared for all that we're hearing. There's no way we can be ready for all of the ramifications, all of the side stuff that is accompanying this. So get this, it was just two weeks ago that we met for the last time in our sanctuary. Who knew that would be the case? Just less than two weeks ago, we were told by the government that we shouldn't gather together in groups larger than 50. And within a few hours, it was we should be gathered together in groups smaller than 10. And if we do, we should stay six feet apart from each other. And now the government is encouraging us to really limit our movement away from home, that we should only go out if we have to, to get the bare essentials in life or care for the most vulnerable. That's a lot. There's no way that we could have fully prepared for that hearing the news just a few weeks ago. So living amidst this COVID-19, trying to grasp with all of the things that we're trying to do to keep ourselves and others well, has got people asking some big questions. People are starting to ask, do you think God is trying to tell us something? Friends, I think God has been trying to tell us something all along. From the moment we were claimed through the waters of baptism, God has been giving us the same message then as he is now. God's message to us, the thing that God is telling us is that we are his beloved children and that nothing can separate us from his love. God is telling us again and again and again that we are freed and forgiven. And he wants us to live life knowing that. God says, I love you. There's nothing you can do. But once you finally grasp that, would you please start living your life knowing that every breath you take, every blink that covers your eyeballs is all gift. God says, will you live this message for yourself and share it with other people? God says, will you trust in me and find your hope and your peace in me rather than letting worry and fear and anxiety steal the joy that I have for you? God's message to us is live generously because you ain't taking any of it with you. And what I've got waiting for you on the other side is so much better than the stuff that you try to grasp and hoard and hang on to. Yeah, God's trying to tell us something but it's not a new message. God tells us that there will be suffering, that there will be rough days. And he tells us that so that we can be prepared for the joy that comes once we get through it. Spoiler alert, this story of the destruction of the temple is really a story, a metaphor for Jesus himself. He knows that he is allowing himself, his earthly life, to end so that he can be with us always through his own Holy Spirit. Jesus says the temple will be destroyed. Jesus is saying, I'm going to die to pave the way for you. Jesus says there will be suffering, but I go before you so that you can follow through and get through it. The suffering is not the end all be all. Jesus says, I give my life for you. So that when your time comes, which it will, that that's not the end. That there will be forgiveness and eternal life for all who believe. That's the message that Jesus is giving us. It's the message that he's been giving us 
all along. So if we know there will be suffering, we know that it's temporary and that God goes before us. If we know our eternal life is secured, then we get to live our life in thankful response to all that God has given us. The disciples want to know when the bad stuff is coming. I don't know about you, but that seems like kind of a downer way to live. I'd rather know when the good stuff is coming. And guess what? Every day has good stuff in it. So live freed and fully hearing and receiving and sharing God's message. That's the journey, the blessings upon it. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. I will end each petition with hear our cry, O God. Please respond with listen to our prayer. Let us pray. O God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and fear. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, and all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families around the world. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions and protect and guard all those who must travel. Be with all of our students and teachers as they begin distance learning this week. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. God of hope, bring comfort and be with those who we name who are in need of our prayers this day. Cheryl, Dean, Earl, Ray, Chuck, Michael, Don, Sarah, Elaine, Rachel, Judy, Colleen, Deb, Michaela, John, and service-connected personnel and families serving this country here and abroad in any capacity. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Bless all for whom we pray this day and keep us alert to the ways you are working in your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Christ, called to grow in faith and action.